I know. It's a whole sweater for my whole adult human size body. Hello everyone, welcome to the Capital K Knitting Podcast. My name is Bethany and this is my podcast where I talk about knitting and the projects I am doing. I started knitting with a capital K over two years ago, and so almost everything that I do has a new technique I've never tried before. I have not been knitting with a capital K long enough to feel like a pro in any way. So this podcast's purpose is so that I can share my learning with you and so that you can comment and share your learning with me. Uh, First things first, a lot of us are aware of the situation that's happening in Ukraine right now. Um, I have dear friends who live there and uh, a lot of us as makers, countries don't really hold as much, the boundaries don't seem as stiff, right, for makers because we're all just in a test knitting group together and we're all around the world and things like that. So. Uh, I will be donating all of the Tread Heavy sock pattern sales from this week, which is, today is Sunday, February 27th, all the way to this coming Saturday. So from today through Saturday, this whole week, all the sales for the Tread Heavy sock pattern will go to Ukraine Relief. Um, there, it's, it's getting rough over there is a a really under rated way to say it um but and you know how you feel sometimes overwhelmed and helpless when something bad is happening in the world and I just want to remind myself and all of you that we can just do what we can when we can and so we will do what we can when we can and this is something i can do and uh so i hope you'll support me in that and enjoy the tread heavy sock pattern uh yeah with with your doing good okay moving on this is a chai tea that's in my little cuddle mug. I like it because I can put my hands in it. It's nice. Um, and it's very yummy. So if you'll grab a drink and join me in diving into this knitting, that'll be really fun. I did that just for you, Kelsey. She and I were joking because we were saying that when podcasters suggest for us to get a cozy drink, we always do because it sounds really nice. Okay, I'm taking this off because it's way easier to show you. This finished object, what? I know, it's a whole sweater for my whole adult human size body. This is the first sweater I've ever knit for myself. This is the first, yeah, garment I've ever knit for myself. This is, this is, I'm, this is a lot of firsts, basically. Uh, this is a test knit for Alex of Vert and Rose. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you should because her feed is just beautiful. Beautiful. And this sweater was on her uh on a post she posted it and i just immediately messaged her and said please can i test knit that sweater (laughs) and she said well what you know what circumference would you be knitting and so i told her and um i've got my hair on this and she said yeah that'd be great i don't have a tester for that size yet and i just yes awesome so this is the malwina sweater i think that's how you say it malwina sweater and this raglan detail is just so pretty so pretty in fact that i asked her if i could take it down the side of the body (laughs) and she graciously just said yeah i think that'd be really interesting to see how that turns out so it goes all the way down here even a little bit past the start of the ribbing 
I really, really love that detail. She And it is not as hard as it looks. It looks beautiful and complicated, but it's not. It, she does a really good job of explaining how to do it. And then this lace detail, oh my goodness, look at it. Look at this lace detail. It's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. I was obsessed with knitting this sweater and I'm not kidding. Like to the point where you wonder, do I, do I maybe have obsess obsessive problems? Um, I do though. I know I do. So it's the answer to that is yes. Um, it's this beautiful balloon sleeve and I think it just totally works. I've been trying to figure out if I was behind the balloon sleeve thing, if I wanted to knit something with a balloon sleeve, because obviously the things that we knit, like, they're going to be around for a while. That's the whole point of slow fashion, right? And not sure if I wanted to be in on the trend, but I think it's perfect. I love it. And I knit it in Drops Nepal. Oh, it's over here. I knit it in Drops Nepal, which these are two 50 gram balls and that's what I had left over. I purchased 14 of them and I had these and about six grams left over from the sweater, which is fun because I really like this color. And so I've been thinking about whether I should knit, um, like a headband with it or something. I've been thinking about my girls and how far these would go in a sweater for them. And then maybe I could like fade it to a white or something. Yeah, I, I'm still thinking about what to do with those leftovers, but I think it's really pretty and I'm glad to have them. So I need to put, the only thing that I think I need to do is put like a little tag back here because this morning I put it on backwards. <laughs> And I wore it that way to church and everything and um, not until I was sitting down on my couch and like the neckline was kind of into my neck. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And I didn't even realize that I had it on backwards until maybe an hour after I was sitting on the couch thinking that the neckline was too high on the front. Now though, now, now I understand what was happening, but then I did not. And the the yarn is really soft as it's the 65% wool, 35% alpaca mix. And of course that means, whew, don't worry, that wasn't as hard as it sounded. My elbow is fine. Um, the, I just love the way all of this sits. It's really nice. Um, the yarn is pilling a bit, a lot really. Uh, because, because it's really soft yarn. So you can see some of it under here, right? And then there's a bit on the side of the sweater too, just obviously because that's where my arms are going back and forth when I'm walking. The test knit deadline for this sweater isn't until the end of March. So you probably won't see the pattern until sometime in April, but I will be making a post on my Instagram feed about the launch of the pattern and everything uh, just to help with that launch. So you can follow me and you can definitely follow Alex of Vert and Rose to be sure to know when that's coming. Now, that is my one finished object. And some of you may be thinking, Bethany, we know you had two other sweaters on your needles. How did you just finish one that you hadn't even cast on yet? And that's perfectly valid question. Um, the question that the answer is, is that I was just completely obsessed and I knit on nothing else other than the sweater for about nine days. And that's, and that's how it is. So, <laughs> so we'll just move straight into it, shall we? So here is the DRK Everyday Sweater. And there's not a ton of progress in the body, partially because I was working on a different sweater, but partially because I kind of learned a lesson with this sweater that by doing the raglan detail down the side here, if you can see it, it goes down the side, 
it kept me way more engaged with the body of the sweater. I've knit children's sweaters before, and even with the smaller circumference of the body being for the body of a child, I still have to like basically persevere through. And so I thought, you know what? I am struggling a little bit with this sport weight sweater because I know it's going to take a long time. And so I, I feel like I'm not making any progress. I was about nine rows in on the body. And so I just dropped down all my stitches here and then picked them back up to do it as a double moss stitch. I did that on both sides under the underarms so that I can keep myself engaged. I'm not entirely sure how well it's gonna, the stitch definition is even gonna look because I'm holding this with the alpaca. This is the Huasco sock kettle dyed yarn. It's a fingering weight yarn in the ochre colorway. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, can't wait to make a pair of socks out of that. And then I'm also holding it with the rust uh, cumulus alpaca here. Oh my goodness, I've been looking for this pair of glasses for days. Why is it even in here? That's ridiculous ridiculous I bet it just slid there when I was on the couch but this one is the colorway rust and I'm holding that together with it and it's very very soft it's very nice and even if the stitch definition isn't amazing with it if it just like looks different under the underarms I'm okay like that I think it keeping me engaged is worth that looking um, not entirely professional or whatever but I also am wondering if it having if it going all the way down the side will make it look more cohesive so experimenting on that front okay next is oh and I'm knitting that on I'm not very good at telling you guys what size needle on a US 5 a 3.75 millimeter needle so sport weight on 3.75, it's going to take a second, but I know I will be glad when it's done because it'll be really a great transition piece to go from winter into spring. And I really do like the colors and everything, so I think it'll be really nice to have. So next up, though, is our By the Campfire Sweater by Unwind Knitwear. I am needing to attach more... <laughs> of this green, which is why I'm not even through this row here. But you can see I've got that first little band of color work done, and then I've already faded into the green. I got this wound off, which is good because I'm holding it double. This is the Holstgarn fingering weight uh, in the colorway Tundra. This is the black is Galaxy by Let Lopi, and then the light ash heather in Let Lopi is what looks like this white on this other side. So this is for, yeah, this is for this side, the left side. And once I get through the color work on this part, it just kind of flies. It's really great. And I'm using the suggested needle, needle size for both of these sweaters in the pattern. And the gauge seems to be really good. Um, also, this sweater gets me qualified to join the cone along that the Crea Bea podcast is putting on right now. This is what I'm pulling my green from. And it was a 500 gram cone. I am interested to know how much is on it now or how much will be on it when I finish this sweater. I'm very excited about seeing that. So, um, yeah, it's coming along and I'm very excited about sticking the bottom. My 
I told my friends at my local yarn shop that I would bring it in there when I steak it, and uh, so hopefully that'll all that'll that'll work for me to be able to go there to do that. I have a few smaller projects still on the needles. I've got the Musselberg, and the last Musselberg that I had that was probably this far along, I just knit it monogamously and had it done in about three days. So I've been thinking about doing that with this one too, just to have it done and I can hand it to him and have that, you know, all set. Um, because I am really wanting to move on to other smaller projects. I think because I, and this is where I was last time we talked. So I got a little bit in there some of it done. This is my on the go project. So I've been just taking it with me when I go out. Um, but I haven't been going out very much because my kids were sick last week. And so I was able to sit down and knit this thing, uh, which was really great. Um, I haven't made, I've done a few rows on my last second sock. Um, but not, not enough to warrant any uh, show and tell here. But I will be, I, I'm hoping to get that done soon just to be able to cast on another pair of socks would be nice. And this is my mitt. I got the cuff done. It's all joined. It's a double thick cuff. And this is a twisted rib here. But I forgot that I was supposed to start with a twisted rib. And so on the inside, it's not a twisted rib on the, it starts probably here. Can you see the difference there of the twisted and the non-twisted rib? Which is fine because it's on the inside. And I think I might actually do that on purpose next time for the next cuff because it's so much faster to do the regular rib than the twisted rib. But I get why they do it for this mitt. So I would do it for the outside. And I will be doing that. I have my provisional cast on already and everything. And I'm going to be switching to the other mitt because... Um, oh, I didn't even tell you. The Musselberg is Patton's Croy. Both of the thing, both of the yarns I'm using. I'm using the blue there and I'm using just a straight black and the colorways called carbon and I'm holding the blue together with a cumulus alpaca lace weight and the colorway is moonlight and I'm going to be holding the black yarn with a black uh, alpaca as well. This is a juniper moon uh, alpaca. I think it's a hundred percent alpaca. And that is why I'm holding it with this. Um, oh, I have the tags in here. I can show you. I don't have to guess. What? Yes, it is 100% alpaca. Ding, ding, ding. You win a pair of mittens that you will knit yourself. Um, here it is. Juniper Moon Harriet. And it's in the colorway Cornflower there. And I'm holding it with the... Uh, wool and silk yarn merino silk blend because I don't want it to have and that's the indigo colorway in here that's cornflower and this is the indigo colorway ha huh. everything's jumbled together and isn't that just the most beautiful thing I used this color in my shawlography shawl and I also um used these are the same colors that I used for my mom's uh, convertible mitts when I knit them for her. I'm going to be doing the other cuff first before I move on with the mitt because I obviously don't have enough of that cornflower to finish both of them and I'd like to be able to kind of fade into another blue that I have um, but they are two different blues and so I would like to kind of fade them in if I have enough to do that and to be able to do that I'd have to do them you know I'd have to see how much I have so that is that is that that is all the whips guys I am 
wanting to clear off my needles because I have some responsibility knitting, which I, I categorize responsibility knitting as things that I've told people that I will make for them. I have quite a few of those on the docket. And then I have some work knitting that I need to do. Um, I need to knit up the DK version of the Tread Heavy Sock. And then moving on from that, I'll be doing toe up versions of the Tread Heavy Sock. So there's, there's always stuff, right? But we're gonna talk about that later in another episode because now it's time for acquisitions. I just have a couple here and the last one is a doozy. And it's also a spoiler, so if you wanna bow out now, I totally get it. This is just a shepherd's wool hank that I picked up at my local yarn shop. I've been playing around with the idea of knitting a golden fern sweater. I think it's so beautiful and I realize now though that I didn't even check to see what weight I need for it. <laughs> So I might be using this for something else. This is a worsted weight and I have this beautiful green yarn. It, it's shepherd's wool in a blue spruce colorway. And I was like, ooh, these would work really well for that. But I don't even know if I got the right weight of yarn. I have to go check. Um, the, the golden fern may have to wait for a while because I don't know if that will work. So yeah. And now is the reveal. If any of you ordered the Knitting Nakabi Herbology Mystery Box and you don't want to see it, you should look away now because I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> so this is Knitting Nakabi's box. She does an Herbology Mystery Box and she does a Mythical Creatures Mystery Box every month. It's an opt-in box. So you don't have to like worry about canceling anything. You just need to make sure you you get in if you want in. And this month's theme for the Herbology box was elderberries. So it comes with this very cool stamped elderberry sketch there. And then it has all these things you can learn about elderberries on the back. It has like what technically an elderberry is, what people have used it for throughout history, and what the benefits are if you're looking for how you can use it in your life. So then she also has this um, wild wood green tea and it has elderberries in it. It has gunpowder green tea, elderberries, orange peel, and hibiscus, which sounds really good. Sounds like sweet, but also like with a little zing in there. And then there's also this elderberry syrup by Liz and Lay. Really great. Elderberry syrup is really good for you, especially if you're trying to get over something. And then, um, there was a, a bar of soap that was supposed to come with the box. So if you ordered the box, then you will be getting the bar of soap. Um, Kelsey and I are friends and some mix up happened with the uh, quantities and she was stressing, man. She was, she was stressing. And I don't know how long she was stressing before she messaged me, but she messaged me and she said, hey, I've looked everywhere. I don't know what happened. There's, you know, there's one less than there's supposed to be. And I checked with the person who makes the soap and they don't have any more. That was it. And she was like, so is it possible for me to replace the soap in your box with something else? And I was like, yeah, don't like, don't worry about it. This, you don't need to be stressed out about this. It's okay. Like if you eventually find some soap somewhere, you don't need to feel like you can need to send it to me. Just take a bath with it. It's okay. You, you're good. Like she, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure she may still be, uh, 
I don't know, hanging on to some of that, but I just was like, I am so sorry that that stressed you out so much. It's okay. We can both move on. It's all right. And thankfully she said she was able to breathe after that. So, um, so even though there's no soap in my box, there is soap in everybody else's boxes. And the icing on the cake is the yarn, of course. And the I the the icing, the yarn for the herbology uh mystery box, it isn't like dyed so that it will look like whatever herb um color you would think of with elderberries. It's actually just dyed with whatever herb is the theme of that month. So this surprisingly was dyed with elderberries and it's this lovely silver green and it is the name is silver linings and I chose the DK weight I think you can choose fingering weight if you want for it and it's just so gorgeous so she does all non superwash yarns all naturally dyed and look at that it's so beautiful so beautiful so what she decided to replace my soap with was more yarn and of course as we all know um yes please yarn right like yeah and this is uh this was dyed with marigolds this light green and it's the colorway weeds and it's also a DK weight. So, and I think they look good together, don't you? Little, little, uh, almost like a frog and toad vibe going on there. Yeah, very cute, very cute. So, I have cast on for the mystery knit along for the As You Wish mystery knit along by Lyrical Knits. But that is going to be in a separate video once I finish the first clue, just like how I did with the shawlography uh, knit along. I know that some people are really, they really try not to see um, the clues for other people's projects. And I, and I get that. So there's other videos for that. So I think that is the end of our pro scheduled programming today, folks. I'm just realizing that this video is about half as long as my podcasts normally are and I'm sure that's because I haven't finished much other than this sweater that, that's a lot though I mean come on now but out of the whips in total a lot of them are still hanging on so I am wondering if I also just talked really fast and I'm sorry if I was talking too fast for those of you who may want to slow me down there is a feature on the speed of the video that you can use on youtube also everything that i talk about is going to be in the description box below so if you think oh where can i get that it'll be in the description box below at least some way for you to know how to get whatever i have on the podcast and lastly, I was wondering if you could help me out. I've been thinking about the term like selfish knitting and the term stash. And they don't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be bad. I don't know how selfishness, you know, can be categorized as good. But I've been trying to think of different ways to say that. Like, instead of saying this is from my stash, saying like this is one of my saved yarns or um instead of saying selfish knitting saying like personal knitting because it's not selfish to knit your own clothes it's not selfish to knit your own socks or hats or whatever else it it's not <laughs> um and having a stash i feel like has also kind of gained a negative connotation and so i've been thinking about those two terms and wondering how you feel about that. You know, if there's a different phrase that you use for that and um, yeah, what your thoughts are on those terms for knitting, if they should be adjusted at all. So I will see you guys soon.
I'm going to be doing a video of the MCAL with Lyrical Knits, and uh, I'll see you then. But until then, happy knitting!